to welcome you all to San Francisco. For generations, this city has been a gathering place for people across the Asia Pacific and around the world. Young people have come here to study and to dream. Families have come here to see the sights and to lay down roots. Entrepreneurs have come here to celebrate and create the next great idea that is changing the world. And leaders like all of you have come here to confront the challenges our world faces today and to seize on the opportunities to drive prosperity. We are a city of history. The United Nations Charter was signed here in 1945. The Peace Treaty with Japan was signed here in 1951. We are home to the oldest Chinatown in the United States. And we are a city of the future, a leader in innovation and sustainability. Our Golden Gate has always been our country's connection to the Asia Pacific. The world matters to this city, and this city matters to the world. And this week's meetings, this week's meetings will remind us all how much we matter to one another. So thank you again for being here. And again, welcome to San Francisco, everybody. Please welcome Governor Gavin Newsom. The mayor just stole my speech, so, uh, but I want to pick up on a few things she said. She talked about a a city uh, of dreamers. Uh, she talked about entrepreneurialism. I'll just say this on behalf of a grateful state. Welcome to the state of California. A state, not just a city of dreamers, of doers, of entrepreneurs, of innovators. A state like our city, San Francisco, that prides itself on being on the leading and cutting edge of new ideas. We love to say about California, respectfully, the future happens here first. We, we are America's coming attraction. And let me just say this. One of the things I love about being from California, we talk about the American dream. There's only one other state in this nation that attaches itself to a dream. No other state has a dream. California still has a dream, the California dream. And I want you to know it is alive and well this week here at the APAC conference. So let me... Let me just welcome all of you, let me thank you, and let me close with this. It's a point of deep pride, and I mean this. In the world we're living in where nations and people are being torn apart because of racial and religious and ethnic controversies, fueling fanaticism in some cases and terror, you know, I want you to know you're in San Francisco, one of the most diverse cities, in the most diverse state, California, in the world's most diverse democracy, America, and it's a point of deep pride our capacity to live together and advance together and prosper together across every conceivable difference. And I think that's really the spirit of this week. It's this notion of the Commonwealth, that we're all better off when we're all better off. So here's to not tolerating our diversity. Here's to celebrating it. And here's to celebrating APAC. Welcome to California. Please welcome the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Good evening, everyone.
everyone. To our President Joe Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, to Governor Newsom, Mayor Breed, Speaker Emerita Pelosi, and the many friends and leaders who are here. It is an honor on behalf of Doug and myself to welcome APEC to our home state of California. <laughs> So the United States is a proud Pacific power, and the Indo-Pacific is critical to the security and prosperity of the American people. It is for that reason that President Joe Biden and I have strengthened our alliances and partnerships, our multilateral relationships in the region, all to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific. As Vice President, I have traveled to Indo-Pacific countries at least four times over the last few years. I have visited American sailors deployed to Japan and American soldiers at the Korean DMZ. I have worked with CEOs in Singapore and Tokyo to strengthen supply chains and witnessed the impressive activism of young leaders in Jakarta Manila, and Hanoi. And I have spent time with many of the world leaders here today in bilateral meetings and multilateral summits, including at APEC, where I represented the United States in Bangkok last year. All of this has convinced me of the energy and opportunities of the Indo-Pacific. And I remain incredibly optimistic about our future as a region. As we shape that future together, I can think of no better place to convene than San Francisco. A city that looks out at the Pacific, and as many of you here know, it's good to be home. <laughs> On that point, I was born just across the bay in Oakland. And my mother was a scientist at the University of California, Berkeley. And she had two goals in her life, to raise her two daughters and to end breast cancer. She was a breast cancer researcher. So at a very early age, I learned about the power of innovation that it requires us to question the status quo and think boldly. Innovation is about our ability to see what can be unburdened by what has been. The ability to not only imagine a better future, but to build it. And I've seen the power of innovation to lift communities, whether I was the District Attorney of San Francisco, Attorney General of California, a United States Senator, and now as Vice President of the United States. And as I represent then our nation around the world, I have seen how so many of the new ideas and technologies that started right here in the Bay Area have moved all of humanity forward. So we gather this week to continue our work together to improve the human condition. Under our president, Joe Biden, the United States will continue to lead on innovation, economic cooperation, and a shared vision for the future. Together through APEC, we can grow our economies unlock industries of the future, and ensure that all people prosper. I look forward to our productive meetings in the days ahead. And again, to all of our visitors, welcome to San Francisco. Thank you.
Steph, what are you doing here? Oh, the mayor asked me to join. Something about uh, MVPs coming to San Francisco? I think she said VIPs. But I'm a... I know, I know, a two-time NBA MVP. Chrissy Yamaguchi, the MVP of the ice. Steph, that's not really a thing in figure skating. Brandy Chastain, the MVP of the pitch. Uh, that's not exactly what they call it at the World Cup. Oh, good. We're all here. I've gathered us together because San Francisco is about to welcome a group of global leaders from across the Asia Pacific. Very important people. VIPs. Is it Riku and Ryuichi? Although, I guess a pair of figure skaters isn't technically a group. No, wait, maybe it's all the golden ball winners from the Women's World Cup. That's what they call an MVP in soccer. Oh, I know, I know. This is about the Olympics, though, right? Coach coaches the U.S. men's basketball team. Paris 2024, baby. Let me stop you right there. The leaders of APEC economies are coming to San Francisco. Sounds important. Yeah, I've heard of them. They're responsible for keeping trade moving through, like, 21 economies. Tell me you Googled that. No, I just started a clothing business after I got off the ice, and because of APEC, I'm able to ship products throughout the world. You need a full shipping container to fit a dozen of these 13 and a half. And because the forum makes trade of goods and services easier, it makes innovation and inclusive growth easier too. So it's really critical for our city. So, Madam Mayor, what do you need from us? If they're looking to blow off some steam between meetings, I know where every field is within a 20-mile radius. Perhaps we can practice some penalty kicks and celebrations. And come to think of it, I don't think I've ever seen any head of state in skates. Well, these are heads of economies. And at any rate, I don't think they'll have time for fun and games. But they are going to be working as a team. And you guys know something about teamwork, right? What I need is some advice for them. From us? Listen, if I've learned anything over my years of coaching, it's this. To succeed on and off the court, the entire team has to work together. Winning takes all of us. Well, that'll work. One last thing. Let's huddle up and say welcome to San Francisco, APEC. Coach? On three. One, two, three. Welcome, welcome to San Francisco, Francisco APEC. APEC. Wait a sec. I have one more thing to say. Mr. President, you and I both know winning takes everyone. That's true for my team, the Golden State Warriors. And that's true for this team of leaders. So on behalf of the people of San Francisco, welcome to our city, APEC. And on behalf of, well, the whole world, I hope you have a productive meeting. And now it is my distinct honor to introduce the President of the United States, Joe Biden. everyone. I think there's folks back up behind that barrier. There are. Oh, Michael. Don't jump. Don't jump. <laughs> Hello, Epic. Coach, thanks for that introduction, and thanks for the uh, San Francisco's MVP VIPs that we just saw on the screen. And it's a real honor to welcome all my fellow leaders to the United States. Two years ago, when the United States offered to host this summit, we knew we needed a location dynamic and diverse and as APAC itself. And they pick uh, in San Francisco. Here we are. I want to talk about Governor Newsom. I want to thank him. He's been one hell of a governor, man. <laughs> Matter of fact, he could be anything you want. He could have the job I'm looking for. <laughs> mayor Breed, congratulations. Uh, being a mayor, <laughs> well, you're crazy. <laughs> I think it's the hardest job in American politics. And everyone on the host committee for all, uh, all you've done to open your beautiful, historic city to us. You know, I uh, digress just a second. I was with Xi Jinping today, and, uh, and I showed him a photograph that he's extremely proud of. When he was a young man, I think he was 32, maybe 28, 30 years old in that range, 
And he was, hey, how you doing, man? He was actually standing on the Golden Gate Bridge. He had come to visit. And he said, and I looked at the picture. I said, I want to show you a picture. He said, I like that picture. I like the play. Well, he was translated to say, I like that picture. So he's been coming here. And uh, one of the things I pointed out to him is that you have one of the largest Chinese populations in America here. And uh, he was, uh, he feels like you're going home here. You know, we got, is Nancy here tonight? Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> Nancy, you are the finest Speaker of the House in American history. Well, you are. You are, Nancy. Thank God. I tell you what, you're the very best, Nancy. Thank you, thank you for all you do. Look, and uh, I'm particularly grateful that uh, the to the Bay Area for giving our great vice president uh, a chance to uh, become vice president. <laughs> She's the best. She's an outstanding leader and a great partner. This is a city by the Bay, a city where many have left their hearts. And, uh, the city built for generations of dreamers, all, all chasing the hope and a chance to build something new. From here in San Francisco, America reaches out all across the Pacific building bridges mightier than the Golden Gate, spanning more, than, more and more space and time than the great expanse of the water has. Bridges linking pride in our past, the immigrants and workers who sunk their sweat and found it in the foundations of this nation and our hope for the future, and the untold heights to which we're going to climb together. Bridges connecting diverse communities all across the traditions, cultures, and languages we find the common dreams we share for ourselves and for our children. Bridges that carry the ideas of entrepreneurs, what if, why not, what next? Look, so over the next few days, I hope we'll all take full advantage of this summit to make new connections and spark new partnerships, because every step we take to deepen our cooperation, to launch a new venture, to tackle the challenges and impact on all of us, is a step toward realization of the enormous potential of our Asian Pacific future. Ladies and gentlemen, a future where our economics are strong, vibrant, and sustainable, because our workers are empowered and protected. Women and girls are full and equal participants in every aspect of our society. Young people, young people can envision. Oh, that's a fact. By the way, I got more, more women in my cabinet than men. I told Nancy, I'm not stupid. All the women in my family are a hell of a lot smarter than all the men, including me. <laughs> but young people can envision for themselves the lives and hope for unlimited possibilities. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a few busy days ahead of us. The challenges before us today are unlike those faced by previous groups of APEC leaders. How are we going to harness the potential of artificial intelligence to lift up the world and lives and, while minimizing the risk and safety concerns that it presents? Will we act with the speed and urgency necessary to dramatically curb the carbon emissions and avert the climate catastrophe that threatens us all? Can we build a supply chain that are more resilient, more secure in the face of threats like pandemics and natural disasters, and that will form a strong foundation for a clean economy for tomorrow? Folks, challenges may be different, but our strongest tools to meet them, those challenges remain the same as they were for our first APEC Leader Summit. Connection, cooperation, collective action, and common purpose. That's why we're all here. I'm looking forward to seeing all the progress we're going to make and all the bridges between our people we're going to continue to build in the months and years ahead. So thank you all again for being here, and welcome to San Francisco. Thank you. <laughs>